All right. Welcome back, everybody, to Altcoin Daily. My name is Aaron. Bitcoin at $40,000 today is simply a drop in the bucket. You got to understand, especially if you're new to cryptocurrency, that many people never thought this would happen. I mean, most of the videos on this channel is us talking about Bitcoin when it was under $14,000, and there were a lot of skeptics back then. Well, now all of a sudden, Bitcoin's price chart looks like this. And more than that, a $100,000 price per Bitcoin not only seems possible, this seems probable. I mean, even JP Morgan, because Bitcoin has the gold 2.0 narrative, because Bitcoin is digital gold, even JP Morgan says that Bitcoin could be over $100,000 someday, $146,000. So that's kind of weird, right? that JP Morgan is being so conservative with their Bitcoin prediction. Because if you understand Bitcoin like I do, like Pomp does, then you understand that a $1 million price per Bitcoin is inevitable. Pomp will explain everything. So make sure you watch this whole clip. It starts off with Melissa Lee. She no longer has that smirk on her face that she used to have. But she asks, hey, you know, Bitcoin's only narrative now is, is gold. That's it. Is that enough to take Bitcoin to such high prices? And Pomp educates her as, as to why Bitcoin to $1 million inevitable. JP Morgan came out with a note uh, just the other day, 146,000 was the price target on Bitcoin. And one of their major um, theses in that note was that it would be a replacement for gold. And I'm just curious because it seems like all of the other bullish reasons behind Bitcoin have disappeared, and now it's primarily the store of value. Can it continue at the pace that you think it should go with just that one thesis? Yeah, I think, look, one of the key pieces here is why is JP Morgan so conservative, right? If you really think about in the technology world, we talk about 10x improvements of products. Bitcoin is at least 10x better than gold in every way. Um, and so I think that if you just think of a Bitcoin product that is 2x better and market cap kind of follows that, that would put Bitcoin at a million dollars a coin, right? Just 2x gold's market cap. And the key piece here, when I say those numbers, they kind of shock people. But we have to remember that both gold and Bitcoin are sound money principles. Gold is the analog application of sound money principles. Bitcoin is the digital application of sound money principles. And there is not a single digital product that replaced an analog product, but yet is still smaller than those analog products. The digital product is always bigger. And so I think it's a foregone conclusion at this point that not only is uh, Bitcoin's market cap gonna flip gold, it's just a question of how much bigger is it going to be? Is it gonna be 2X bigger, 5X bigger, 10X bigger? I don't think we know, uh, and the timeline is a question, but it's a foregone conclusion in my opinion that not only is uh, Bitcoin a 10X improvement on gold, and the market cap is going to flip it at some point in the future. Take the time to understand what Bitcoin is. It is a 10x improvement on gold. But for one Bitcoin to get to a price of $1 million per coin, all it needs to do is be a 2x improvement. And people are starting to realize this. The demand for Bitcoin is about to increase by orders of magnitude. Anthony Pompliano explains this. The other piece of this that I think is really important to understand is that every single corporation, both in the United States and outside the US, is going to put Bitcoin into their treasury. They're going to have to. We are watching central banks around the world stuff the economy with liquidity, and people are running around saying, how do I protect the purchasing power? And so gold has served uh, that purpose in some treasuries, but I think Bitcoin uh, is just being underestimated. The fact that every single company uh, that's publicly traded or private is going to end up putting Bitcoin in that treasury, that is a wall of demand that people just aren't accounting for. And so as we're seeing today, just Wall Street institutions are showing up yet. Corporations really haven't shown up yet, and Bitcoiners don't want to sell the Bitcoin. And so you have this imbalance between supply and demand, and it's led to this rapid price increase because that's the only way you can accommodate everyone. The Wall Street institutions have to keep bidding higher and higher in order to solicit uh, Bitcoiners to sell that Bitcoin. When the corporations show up, they're going to have to bid it higher and higher. Now, it's important to also talk about there will be volatility along the way. There will be 20, 30 percent drops. Sometimes they'll be very rapid. Sometimes they may be prolonged. But over a long period of time, I think that saying that Bitcoin will be equivalent to gold's market cap is just being overly conservative. And it's likely to eclipse it, you know, sometime in the 2020s. So before 2030, we'll see that happen. 
I like that. I like how Pomp keeps things simple and broad because he knows a lot of new people are tuning into this who are interested in Bitcoin and cryptocurrency. I think we're all noticing this. I mean, 330,000 subscribers, unbelievable. Thank you all. Welcome, everybody. The point is we're seeing a huge influx in subscribers ever since right before Bitcoin broke all-time highs. I mean, this is, this is real, people. Uh, in fact, eToro said it was so overwhelmed by demand by newcomers who wanted to trade crypto on their exchange, it temporarily boosted the amount new users had to put on deposit to discourage them from joining. Okay, sounds like price gouging to me, but whatever. The point is, new people are here, and we're starting to see things like this from the media. Melissa Lee, Bitcoin to 1 million quite a long way from, you know, she first heard about Bitcoin when it was 600. The, the total circulation, circulation value will be in the trillions. And to get from zero trillions is gonna be a bumpy ride. It, it can't go there immediately. It would be quite a ride if it did. Uh, I wanna ask you because uh, Bitcoin is, I mean, it's digital. It's a barcode that you get yeah. once you put money yeah. in. What, who's to stop anybody else from creating another Bitcoin? Ah, that's an excellent question. Hey, sorry to interrupt my friends. I wanted to take 60 seconds to thank our sponsor for today's video. This is a company that I really like, blockfi.com backslash altcoin daily. If you have Bitcoin, if you have Ethereum, if you have Litecoin or stable coins and they're just sitting around, why not put some of your crypto to work? You can earn up to 8.6 APY with a BlockFi interest account if you use our link or type in blockfi.com backslash altcoin daily and put down $25 or more in crypto, you can get 250 crypto bonus for free for signing up. And by the way, there is no minimum to earn interest in general. This is the payout structure. You can buy crypto with cash. You can be a part of crypto backed loans. You can buy, sell, and trade crypto. And this is brought to us by some of the biggest names in crypto by our boy, Anthony Pompliano himself, along with the Winklevi, along with uh, Mike Novogratz, along with Coinbase. So, this is traditional financial services for cryptocurrency. This is a company that I really like blockfi.com backslash altcoin daily. Click through the link. Just check them out and see what you think. All right, back to the video. All right, let's check in with Bitcoin's network and check in with the strength of the network. I think you're going to find these metrics interesting. Before we continue, actually, real quick, I do think it's important. If you're new to cryptocurrency, it is important to think about this. I mean, you can do whatever you want, but sometimes it takes people a long time to realize that Bitcoin is king for a reason, literally digital gold, and the name of the game is to accumulate as much Bitcoin as possible. So am I either trading or invested in altcoins? Yeah, obviously, I've been in the market a long time. I think there's opportunity there. But for most people, what they should be doing is cost averaging Bitcoin on a regular basis. You better believe month after month, my Bitcoin stash is increasing even by just one Satoshi because, you know, I realize how early we are. So if you're new, keep that in mind. That's just my opinion. You can do whatever you want. Check out these metrics. Pretty revealing. Bitcoin mining difficulty hits another record high. So this speaks to the strength of the network and the fact that Miners are, are turning on their mining machines because they want to mine Bitcoin and get access to digital gold. Looks like a new all-time high for Bitcoin active addresses is in, ladies and gents. A new all-time high for Bitcoin addresses. Literally one of the most important metrics to signal new people coming into the space. The previous all-time high for this metric was late 2016, early 2017 so previously this metric peaked out right here and you know what happened after that this is another interesting metric bitcoin dormancy flow don't worry about what it is but it reached the bull bear threshold so just look at the chart it is at the threshold we touched this threshold in 2019 it seems like we're going to break above it and in the past, every time we have broke above this threshold, bullish price 
action. You can see that right here. All right, guys, I will see you tomorrow.